So I think I got the right mic hooked up. I guess we'll find out, right? Hey guys, and welcome to episode six of Scientific Drinking. Tonight, we're gonna be talking about the problems facing Elon Musk's Starship. Cheers. So tonight I'm drinking the Sublime from uh, Dirty Ore Brewing Company. Kind of like, you know, I hate to say this, but like a Corona with lime, except with more of everything, just more flavor. It's a, it's a more full beer. All right, so before we jump into it, let's cover a little bit of news. Artemis 1, being the integrated Orion capsule and European service module, has made its way down to the Super Guppy to be loaded for final integrated testing up north. Now that's good news. Artemis 1 is going to be the ship that goes around the moon, the first capsule to go around the moon since the Apollo program. Granted, it's going to be unmanned, and it's going to be until Artemis 2 before we see people returning to the moon. So it's super exciting. I got to take a look in person at the Artemis capsule integrated and ready to go, and it's quite a sight. The other good news on the Space Center is the Starliner capsule. It was lifted and integrated with the Atlas V rocket that's going to take it into orbit. Now the difference between the Orion and Starliner capsule is that Orion is capable of re-entering the atmosphere at very high speeds. We're talking uh, return speeds from Moon, Mars, anywhere. Whereas the Boeing Starliner capsule is qualified to enter only at orbital speeds around the International Space Station. So the difference in heat shielding is quite significant between those two capsules. It's going to be great to see American astronauts delivered into space by American rockets again, which hasn't happened since the end of the space shuttle in, uh, in 2011. All right, so the main topic tonight is SpaceX's Starship. Now, this is a huge undertaking, and it's got a lot of people excited. These are the 10 biggest problems that I see that they're gonna have to overcome. And I'm not gonna be one of those skeptics to say that, ah, SpaceX can't do it. Really, nothing's impossible, right? But it's gonna take a lot of time, a lot of thought, and a lot of effort to overcome these problems. So number one is infrastructure. <laughs> And when I say infrastructure, I'm talking about the ballistic transportation network that Elon Musk wants to create between major cities across the world. And that takes, you know, 30 to 45 minutes to pretty much anywhere you want to go. We talk about Beijing, Melbourne, Sydney, South Africa, Swaziland, you know, anywhere. In order to put this network in place, you have to lay out the infrastructure. Here at Kennedy Space Center, to support any given rocket launch, you have to have the ground support equipment necessary to support it. You're talking about the stand for the rocket. You're talking about the fuel system. You're talking about the safety and, and checks that you need to make sure that rocket is, is safe for people to, to, to ride on. And then the fuel system as well. You're talking about hydrogen and kerosene in the case of SpaceX's rockets. It takes a lot to fuel up these rockets. And if you're launching three or four rockets a day, that's a lot of fuel and that's a lot of support equipment that you're gonna need. So he's gonna need a lot of investment to make these locations real. And maybe once there's a proof of concept, people will be more eager to invest in these locations, these launch sites. Number two is noise. This is going to be a really big issue for SpaceX. We already know that the boosters re-entering from the Falcon Heavy rocket cause sonic booms. And this isn't so much a problem because it only happens a few times a year right now. But imagine having these sonic booms go off all the time near your hometown. It might get a little annoying. And uh, during the Concorde program, found out that our tolerance isn't really that good. And in the meantime, the Starship really isn't designed to have that quiet supersonic boom. So whenever it re-enters and lands on these launch pads, you're gonna hear a really big boom. So you're talking about two, three times a day, that's gonna become an issue. So you're gonna to have to be really strategic about where you place these launch pads and landing pads and uh, how you're dealing with the noise. Number three is safety. Right now, the amount of risk we accept for launching a rocket and putting people on that rocket is, it it's, doesn't even compare to the airline industry. It's safer to get on a plane than it is to drive your car. And the rockets are so much more dangerous than cars, it's, it's hard to imagine. You're sitting on top of a pile of explosives. So not only is he going to have to deal with the infrastructure and the noise, but for a regular transportation system like we talk about with the aircraft, he's gonna to have to deal with the safety concerns. A lot of hoops to jump through in order to prove that this is a safe and reliable transportation system. All right, moving on to Elon Musk's moon ambitions. SpaceX was recently certified as a commercial launch service provider using Starship. So we have three major problems facing Starship when it talks about, when we're talking about lunar resupply service. So if you wanna recover Starship and not just put it on the moon, 
there's a lot to consider. That brings us to number four, dust. Dust is gonna be a huge issue when dealing with both the moon and Mars. And we found from the Apollo program that dust can be a huge issue, not only because it's a hazard for people breathing it in, or that it gets in every nook and cranny of your spacecraft and damages mechanical and electrical systems, but because it's, it's dangerous, that dust that goes everywhere. And some of it leaves at extremely high speeds. There's no air to slow it down. So this stuff is leaving at kilometers per second, truly ridiculous speeds. And that can sandblast equipment, it can destroy hardware, it can destroy optics, and it's really a pain to deal with. And when you're talking about something as complex as Starship, which we'll talk about the complexity in a minute, it's gonna be a real challenge to make sure that you can control that dust and mitigate how much it interferes with your systems. In the case of Martian dust, it's actually toxic for people to breathe it in. So you're gonna to have to take extra steps to filter that dust in an atmospheric sense to make sure that it doesn't poison your cargo, and assuming your cargo is people. That brings us to number five, thermal. Re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere is a challenge, even at Earth orbital speed, but coming back from the moon, it's gonna be a real challenge. I mentioned earlier that there was different designs between Orion and the Starliner capsules, and that's because of the heat shielding required to handle the extra speed coming back from the moon and from Mars. But if you're gonna design something like Starship, which is much larger and capable of handling, handling these same speeds, you're gonna to have to deal with that kind of heat shielding. Now you may recall that Elon Musk had mentioned something about a bleeding Starship, and that's called uh, transpiration cooling. It's been looked at before, and is a very fascinating idea. The challenges are numerous. First of all, you're gonna to have to have a substance that doesn't take up so much mass, because you're gonna be pushing out this kind of liquid or this blood. I think he called it a bleeding spaceship. <laughs> Pretty weird. Blood by itself, liquid tends to take up a lot of mass, so if you're gonna have a lot of mass that is required to make this transpiration cooling effective for a long period of time, then it's gonna have to absorb a lot of energy before, before evaporating. So it's simply a matter of conservation of mass and having the substance that can absorb that much energy. Then there's a question of how you're gonna push out this kind of substance to make this kind of sweat or bleed as you're re-entering the atmosphere and you're coming against the force of air, which at these speeds is tremendous. So you're gonna to have to have this kind of really powerful pump that pushes out this liquid through all the pores on the surface of this massive starship. Just mechanically speaking is gonna add a lot of weight to your vehicle. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's a challenge. It's one hell of a challenge. And of course, there's the question of dealing with temperature changes in space itself. The, the heat difference between the side of your spaceship that's facing the sun and the side that's not facing the sun is gonna be quite extreme. And that's gonna stretch the metal because the side that's facing the sun is gonna heat and stretch. The side that's not facing the sun is going to contract. And so you're gonna have to deal with that kind of changing dynamics of the surface of your spaceship as it stretches and contorts with all this temperature changes. So number six is mass. You know it still hurts. Mass is always a problem in space. Mass equals money. And when we say cost, we're talking about delta V cost. Delta V is fuel, fuel is mass, mass is money. So there's this huge issue of how much mass you're gonna put into what orbit and how it's gonna work. And Starship is gonna run into this problem really quickly. Now they've worked out the numbers and they seem to think they can get it onto the surface of the moon and I believe them, but they're gonna to have to be refueled at the moon in order to have enough mass to just get off the surface. When you're talking about a Mars mission, you're gonna to have to lay out the infrastructure and figure out how much mass you really can deliver to Mars. And no matter what trajectory you're designing to, you're going to have to run into this, this mass issue time and time again. Although I don't have a lot to say about the mass issue, it is a very big problem for SpaceX especially when designing Mars missions. So speaking of Mars, the last four issues deal specifically with designing a mission to Mars using Starship. And these are generally specific to longer flight times and missions to Mars. That brings us to number seven. Now this is an issue with any Mars mission and that's radiation. Starship has to deal with the radiation effects of interplanetary travel and protecting its cargo, cargo being people in this case, from the effects of damaging radiation. 
And there's other health issues that go along with this that are kind of piggybacked onto the radiation topic. We're talking about low gravity for extended periods of time, which even NASA really hasn't figured out how to work with. Radiation shielding takes a lot of mass or a very powerful electromagnetic field, which we haven't really De developed yet. So SpaceX already hand has its handful developing the technologies required for Starship. We already talked about thermal mass, but of course, when it comes to radiation shielding, this is gonna become a major problem. Maybe they can have a radiation safe bunker. I don't know, but that's something they're gonna have to figure out. Number eight is power. Power is also gonna become an issue. Uh, whenever you're tra traveling between planets, the further you get away from the sun, the less solar flux you have, the bigger solar panels you'll need. And again, that goes back to our previous issue of mass. Of course, all the electromechanical systems that are needed to deploy and retract these solar panels is also gonna become an issue. Now, if you don't go with solar power and you choose to do some form nuclear or radioisotope thermoelectric generator, otherwise known as an RTG, then that's also become an issue because it's very challenging to launch anything with radioactive elements into orbit from Earth. Now, that policy has kind of been flexible a little bit, especially as NASA's ambitions include using a nuclear propulsion system to get to Mars. That's a little bit flexible and maybe doable, but either way, their power issue as they get further and further away from Earth is gonna have to be something they're gonna look at. Even if they do use a radioisotope thermoelectric generator, RTG, they're gonna have to shield the people inside the Starship from the damaging radiation that's generated. Number nine, MMOD, Micrometeoride Orbital Debris. This is a huge issue in orbit around Earth, in orbit around the moon, and the longer you spend in space, the more of an issue it's gonna be. So with SpaceX's hull, which is pretty thin, relatively speaking, that's not gonna be very effective at, at protecting the occupants from micrometeoride impacts or orbital debris or anything like that. So SpaceX is gonna have to figure a way to make the vehicle itself safe uh, and resilient to micrometeorite impacts. Now again, again, this goes back to mass, like we were talking about before. The more uh, shielding you have for micrometeorite impacts, the heavier it's gonna be, the less mass you can have to other things such as payload, which is really the money maker for this thing. Number 10 is complexity. Now this is kind of more of an abstract concept. And this is something we've been running into at NASA and at any time you're developing a new fighter jet or a new tank or a new spacecraft, you're gonna run into the issue of complexity. And it's something that's really hard to wrap your mind around and deal with, especially since these projects tend to take a very long time. SpaceX is kind of fast-tracked it, so maybe they're a little bit better at handling this, and I hope they are, because maybe we could learn something from that. But complexity in space systems is a huge challenge to overcome because you have so many people working on so many different systems and you run into just the problem of communicating. How do you get people to talk with one another effectively and on time and on topic? You can spend hours talking about small component of a spacecraft or what it means to make it MMOD safe. And you can spend so much time talking about these little things that you lose track of the bigger picture, but they're still important little topics. And this becomes more and more of a challenge the more complex your system is. And when you're talking about something that's capable of re-entering the Earth's atmosphere from Mars-like speeds, capable of protecting its crew, capable of uh, resisting radiation, micrometeorite impacts, it has life support, it has a water recycling system, it has food, it has power generation, it has control system, all of these things that stack on top of each other and make it an increasingly complex system makes it more difficult to build and just wrap your mind around. And this is a problem not just to SpaceX's Starship, but to any space system, any fighter jet, any tank, any new system that we're developing these days, it's gonna be complex. Software has been taking up more and more of our time when it comes to dealing with complex systems. I really hope SpaceX has a solution to all these problems and that they could produce a really kick-ass spacecraft that we can just hop on board and go to Mars and populate Mars. Nothing would make me more happy. I would love to see how they solve these problems. So that's about it. If I said something that's maybe a little bit inaccurate or you have some thoughts on it, don't blow your top. Leave some comments below. Let's talk about it. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Um, there's a lot of things to talk about with Starship. It's certainly exciting. I can't wait to see it launch. So that's it. Thanks for joining me. Cheers.